So you're trying to figure out what to do with all this shutter speed thing. Should you just keep racking the shutter all over the place or maybe apply some ND filters? What is this whole exposure triangle thing that they're talking about? Well, let's have a discussion, shall we? Internet, welcome back again. It's Robert Teagarden here. Today we're talking about shutter speed. I'm doing a series on the exposure triangle. If you haven't already checked out my video on aperture or ISO, you should do that as well. But today we're specifically talking about shutter speed. Now through this whole concept, what I've been doing is correlating the exposure triangle to the elements of your eye. And this one is no different. When we were talking about aperture, I related it to your iris and the shutter speed is more closely related to your eyelid. Like how often are you blinking and how long are you letting your eyes see the light because you close your eyes for a long period of time. We'll, we'll talk about all the details before I get into all that stuff. If you haven't already, you know, do the obligatory subscribe, ring the bell, all of those things so you can catch more of these videos more often. Shutter speed. In photography, it's easier to understand shutter speed than I think it would be video. So I'm going to start there. And in talking about photography, we're specifically seeing how long the curtain itself is open, how long your eyelid is open to allow light to pull into the sensor. Now that combined with your ISO and your aperture settings would provide you with an appropriate exposure. Now, along with aperture, shutter speeds can be kind of confusing because we're talking about them as fractions. So one twenty fifth of a second, one fiftieth of a second, one five thousandth of a second. And so the larger the number on the denominator, actually the shorter the amount of time the shutter is open and closed. But again, a longer shutter speed is represented as a smaller number. So 1 25th as compared to 1 5 thousandths of a second, your 1 25th is going to have more motion blur in the image, whereas your 1 5 thousandths of a second is going to be a much crisper, cleaner image without any motion blur. Now, I think it's safe to say at this point that most of us are shooting on some form of a DSLR camera or a mirrorless DSLR camera that is adapted for video. And being that things have been adapted, the same kind of nomenclature and technology that we're using from film cameras, from cinema cameras, have been inserted into, inserted, inserted into these DSLR cameras. The same thing is true with shutter speeds and the 180 degree rule. And really, what I have to admit is that Shutter speed is actually not a very dynamic element of the exposure triangle at all where video is concerned. It's actually directly correlated to your frame rate. And all of this may seem like, yo man, I just clicked on this thing to figure out shutter speeds. You're talking about 180 degree rule, exposure triangles and frame rates. I know it seems like a lot and I'll make it simple. I, I, I promise, just hang in there with me. When we're creating video, what we're actually doing is we're taking several pictures every second that allow the motion to be perceived across time. That's why they're called moving pictures. Now, most TV and film productions are being shot in 24 frames per second, quite literally 24 frames in a single second. And the reason for this is because that's what we've determined to be the closest resemblance of how the human eye perceives motion and motion blur. So once you have your frame rate set, you then have to take into consideration this 180 degree rule. And without getting too technical, the 180 degree rule indicates that to mimic motion the same way the human eye experiences it in real life, the 180 degree rule states that the shutter speed should be set to double your frame rate. So now that we have these two elements in mind, 24 frames per second and the 180 degree rule saying we should double our frame rate to establish our shutter speed, we kind of get the understanding that shutter speed's a pretty easy thing to determine when you're trying to get your exposure correct. For example, if you're shooting 24 frames per second on a DSLR camera, you would have a shutter speed of 1 50th because that's the closest representation to 24 or 48 that we have. If you're shooting 60 FPS, you would have a shutter speed of 1 over 125. 120 frames per second, your shutter speed would be 1 over 250. So to recap, the first thing you need to do is to establish from a creative standpoint, what frame rate are you going to be shooting this project in and why? And then you double that to establish what your shutter speed is. See, 
I, I told you it wouldn't be that hard. So cool, we have this understanding that there's a relationship between shutter speed and frame rates and really that you would just double your frame rate in order to establish your shutter speed. But what does all this have to do with the creative choice in our exposure triangle? Well, quite simply put, it's motion blur. If you're making the choice to shoot something in 24 frames a second, it's because you want a very natural motion blur. Like right now, I'm shooting at 24 frames a second. If I move my hands wildly like a crazy person, what you're seeing is some form of natural motion blur. However, the higher I go in frame rates, the more pictures per second are being taken, which means it's capturing more parts of my hand moving up and down. Really not just my hand, anything for that matter. So the choice that you're making is that the lower your frame rate, the more motion blur and the more naturally that would be perceived by the human eye. And the higher your frame rates, the more motion is being captured by the camera. So you're getting a much crisper image. Now there are trade-offs here. Obviously with a higher frame rate, you can see more crisper images. Now it's also true that you shoot higher frame rates, you can stretch those frames across a timeline more accurately and shoot in slow motion. So more frames per second allows you to shoot in slow motion or even speed up footage a little bit faster that it's perceived in a more natural way. However, there is kind of this weird thing that you're trying to use normal speeds and shooting at higher frame rates that seems unnatural to us. Like for instance, this piece of footage right here is a high frame rate shot um, and we don't really see any motion blur and so it kind of makes me queasy, like I, it doesn't really feel nice to see stuff like that. So with fairly static shutter speed, you compensate for your exposure triangle with other elements, mainly aperture and ISO, which if you haven't, you should check out those videos over here somewhere. And with that in mind, ladies and germs, this has been Robert Teagarden with another video in the can. We'll see you guys in the next one. Remember, work fast, die hard, and keep on rocking.